Cottage and welcome back to Wales. Lovely to have you here. Hope you're all doing well and that you had a nice weekend. Weather's not too good here today but uh, I'm hoping to get some washing done but it's looking a bit cloudy and a bit black out there at the moment so we'll just have to see. I'm in the kitchen and I'm just harvesting my red currants. I've just been sorting these out and uh, I'm popping them in bags. These are going to go in the freezer and later in the season we're going to make them into some red currant jelly and I'm going to make a, a red currant pies out of them. So that's the plan for them. Because uh, the elderly gentleman that used to live here, he used to make some lovely, delicious red currant pies. And my husband loved them. They always used to rave on about Gordon's pies. So uh, I want to have a go at making some myself and see if I can make them just as good. So that's the plan for the red currants further on in the season. Um, I had a bit of a fight with a blackbird last night. Uh, I went out to harvest my red currants and... Uh, well, I didn't go out to harvest the red currants. I went out to do the raised beds and I was walking past the fruit cage and I heard this tweet in and I saw a blackbird in there and I thought, oh, she's stuck. I'll go in and rescue her. She wasn't stuck. She tunneled her way in and found her, made her own little runway going into the flipping polytunnel, into the fruit cage, sorry. And she'd been eating all my currants. Do you know, I've got about eight black currant bushes out there. And that's my harvest of black currant. I should have had eight times. That's two black currant bushes. And there was only half of the amount of currants on those two currant bushes. So I should have had four or five or even six times that amount of currants. But now the wildlife's been eating the lot. There's been a song thrush in there because I've seen a song thrush in there. There's been um, a dunnock in, uh, not a dunnock, a dunlin is it? The one that looks like a sparrow. They've been getting in there. I think I've had a family of blackbirds in there because I've seen quite a few around in the garden. So they all must have been going in the same way. Anyway, this is all the red currants I got because they stripped three of the bushes that are in there. So I've got this lot left to go in the bag. Um, so yeah, I'm not very happy. The wildlife seems to be having a fine time with all my food. So yeah, I don't, I don't grow it for them, but they seem to come into the garden like and um, preparing a gourmet banquet but uh, yeah it's a bad, constant battle my husband took a mouse down the road this morning because we had a mouse in the live trap again but uh, yeah I've just been using a fork to get them off the stalks it's just easier to take them off you just put your fork on the stalk and do that and that scoops them off like that so yeah, that's what I've been doing with that. But uh, these are ready now to go in the bag. And then we'll start on the black currants. So, just make sure you've got all the little stalks out because you don't want them in your pie. But they're really tasty, they're really sweet. And kind of a sour sweet. I'm just using the um, lid off propagators because it was the biggest thing I had and the easiest thing I had because they've got a flat bottom so they won't fall over but I had to use joss sticks last night to keep the midges away so I could pick because I didn't want to leave it because if I'd left it till this morning I'd have gone out and there'd have been none left so the thing is they get stuck in the holes with the lid Right, so that's all them in there. So I hope you've been enjoying my recipe videos um, and that you've managed to make the lasagna and the hummus. Got another one coming where I'm making cottage pie. Uh, I'm gonna get the raised beds finished and get that done and I'll sh take you up the garden in a bit and show you that. I'm gonna show you my tomatoes today and show you, uh, I've got a bit of footage for you and I'll pop that in and show you me planting the tomatoes up because I plant them in tubs into the soil so I'll show you that, it's quite a good technique to use um, and yeah, just generally going to have a pot a day today I've got all the white currants to harvest, as I say, I've got the black currants to finish so I hope you enjoyed my garden tour video as well I'm sorry there wasn't much to see but the roses all came and went in June with all that weather that we had we had lovely weather and then we had rain and then we had storms and then we had wind 
and it's looking like it's going to rain again today so yeah there's plenty of flower buds to come on the roses and they're all coming into bud now all of them have got rose buds on them apart from buttercup so i'm hoping that we're going to get a nice flush of roses for the end of the season because they flowered up until november last year so i'm hoping for that yeah, I showed you my new roses that I got, one off my mum and dad and one I got as a bargain in the garden centre. So I'm very happy with that. Um, so that's in the last video. I'll put a thing in the i button for you. Uh, I've also done a polytunnel tour. You've seen that, so I'll put that in the i button for you as well. All the summer flowers are coming to an end, but all the late summer flowers are starting to come through now. We've got the Rebecca's coming, the Echinacea's coming. Uh, the lilies are starting to flower, Gordon's lilies back out. Um, so yeah, things are starting to move on apace now. All the leaves are starting to turn brown, I've noticed. And I'm not sure, I was talking to a local lady who's been here all her life and I'm not sure if that's um, the dry weather. Quite possibly it's the dry weather, dried them out too much and they've just not recovered. So yeah, it's been a funny season this year. Different than last year, noticeably different than last year. The swallows haven't um, nested in the garage this year. There's hardly any swallows. The house martins seem to have gone. They must have scarpered. So, yeah, there's not really much wildlife, um, noticeable wildlife happening around here at all, apart from the regular blackbirds and song thrushes, really. So, yeah, anyway, we're going to go out in the garden. We're going to have a little look around the garden. And uh, I'm just going to get my breakfast, get my cup of tea, and I'll see you outside in a minute. Right, so next on the list today is to get these cannellini beans planted. And they're going to go on this trellis here at the back of the polytunnel. We're outside now. And then I've got this lovely jasmine growing up here. And that's going to grow up here. And then I'm going to grow it across the top there and down the other side. And then on this trellis, I thought I'd put these in and uh, put these runner beans in and this solitary mange too, as well. So that's what we're going to do now. I think they got too wet while I was away. I think I watered them too much and left them sitting in water. And I think that's why they haven't grown. Because um, the beans have gone all soggy. But I'm just going to put the whole thing in and see if it grows. But I've got one plant, so pop it in, pop it towards the trellis, like that, and then fill it back in. So that's one. Compost back on the top. That's off the plant pot. We'll put the others in. At least I get a little bit of marge too. So I think I'm just going to plonk the whole thing in. See if we can get that other pea growing. Let's turn it round a bit. I have got coffee grounds to go on and they seem to work. So I'll put them on to keep the slugs off. Right, so this is the other side. So I'll just get these in and then I'll show you when I'm finished. So see you in a minute. So, there we go. I'm on a cannellini beans. Right, okay, so unfortunately I didn't manage to carry on filming the day that I did the beginning of this video because it just rained too much and I wasn't able to get out. So eagle-eyed viewers will notice I've had a haircut. And I've had a change of clothes as well because the weather's warmed up nicely. It's gone a bit dull, the sun was out this morning, but uh, I've been waiting for an opportunity to come out when the bee man's not about making all the noise because he's been using the planer and the fan and the drills and oh, it's been very noisy here this morning. So he's finally stopped. So I thought we'd come out in the garden. So I'm sat in a new space um, out on the yard. My husband and I were really busy the other day and uh, we've created a new space. It's not quite finished, but would you like to have a look? And I'll turn you around and let you see. So this is our new space. It's between the house and the gate out to the car. And we've created a new bench. Um, all it is, we'll come in a little bit closer, is two old chest drawers, those utility ones from just after the war. Um, I'm not sure if it's after the First World War. But uh, all we've done is cut them up 
kept the outside frame but taken the bits out where the drawers go. That's an old door. I got four old doors off um, Facebook Marketplace and uh, we've just cut them up. So yeah, I'm really pleased. It was just one door and we've got four panels on the seat and two panels for the back. It's been anchored to the wall. There's like a proper bench and uh, underneath there is going to be storage for the wood for the house. So I've got to finish doing that. But I also moved my ladder because I wasn't happy with where it was. It was here and I was neglecting it. The plants weren't gotten, getting looked after. It wasn't getting any rain. So what I decided to do was I've moved it here and I'm really, really pleased with it because I've put my geraniums on, I've put my pelagoniums on um, and then we've got the cans that I did, the coffee cup cans that I did and then I've got some herbs and then I've got pelagoniums again. This I've had, oh, for a good 15 years and it's just never known where to put it. So uh, yeah, I've put managed to put that up and then as we go further down, I've got some uh, jives there and they brought the pelagoniums out of the house and I put a fuchsia there so also on the window here I've put another pelagonium and I've got another thing here which I thought to put some bedding plants in or something nice and trailing so I'm really pleased with it I've also put an old crate that used to be in the pantry I've put that there and I thought I'd use that for kindling and uh, put the bigger logs underneath so it's a really nice space now. I'll just pull you back and show you. There you go. Look at that now. So we've both been sitting outside having our tea. And uh, we've got a little round table and we can sit on the bench, sit at the table and have our tea here. And even in the rain, it's dry. So, yeah, really pleased with it. It's a really nice space, really nice addition to the house. And uh, it's somewhere where we've both spent a lot of time, even since Friday. So, yeah, very pleased with it. Very pleased indeed. Yeah, have you seen my rose? Isn't it beautiful? I put it on a brick. Yeah, it looks really nice now. Especially with that hydrangea in front of it. But that's going to go somewhere else. And the hoverflies are just loving these lilies. So, I think these are called stargazer lilies. I'm not sure because of the uh, splodges on the flower. But the hoverflies just love it. There's always loads of flies just hovering around here. I've got loads of buds to come on this rose. This is Grace. This is the one that I got as a bargain in the garden centre the other day. Um, there's the label, in case you want to buy one. It's got the most gorgeous flowers. I've not seen flowers like this before, but they open up into these little rosettes. So I've got loads of buds to come. What I thought we'd do is I thought we'd go down and have a look behind the chickens at the raised beds, go and give them their breakfast. And uh, I'll show you the border that I've been clearing as well. So I left the food outside in the rain last night with the eggs in the top there. <laughs> Very happy chickens, they've got wet food. Seem to like it though. So I've been working hard around here. I've cleared all the weeds made it a lot better, cleared all the bricks, cleared all the wood over to one side and I've done two raised beds. This is an old bed frame that I rescued out the skip next door, took all the um, springs out and all the fabric off and it's a great size for a raised bed, it's a six foot bed and uh, it's about a metre wide, maybe just under a metre wide so it's a great size bed um, and then next to that i built a frame with some wood I brought from the other house, so I've got that. And then I've got this bit of wood left, um, and I'm going to make another two or three beds. Now I've left enough space for the chickens to come out where this board is here, and they're going to come out here, all the way around the back, along there, and then along here. And they're going to have their own little tunnels, and... Um, they're going to be able to wander around and not have Mr Stowe's and not have birds of prey chasing after them. So that's going to be really handy. I've got some hedging plants to put in this gap here to fill in this gap because that is a gate and it is a path and people do walk past. Not very often, we're not in a big city thoroughfare, but it'd just be nice to have that blocked off. And then I can have a bench in here and I can sit here, watch the chickens 
and uh, watch my food grow. So this was going to be where the polytunnel was going, but I wasn't sure with the trees. So that's why the polytunnel's where it is, but I've still got a five metre by four metre space here, which I cleared, and that patch at the back there. So yeah, I'm thinking of having that as the ceasing area over there, because there's not much I can do with the ground underneath. But for the time being, it's just going to be raised beds. And this is where I'm going to put all the long-term stuff that I don't need to get to very often. Um, and it'll just be a lot easier. So my asparagus is going in here. I might do a fruit um, cage and put some fruit in here. So we'll have to see. But uh, yeah, that's the back of the chickens and my progress with the raised beds. So this is my fruit cage and uh, these are all the bushes that the birds stripped. You wouldn't think it had netting on it, would you? But it has. It's got netting all over the whole thing. But they stripped all the bushes. And as you saw at the beginning of my video, I didn't get a lot. Now when it came out the other day, there was, this bush was full of white currants. And uh, it's been raining that much, I haven't been able to get out. And that's probably all the white currants that are left, what you can see there. So I think the birds can finish them off. There's a few dead ones, but yeah. Should have got out sooner, shouldn't I? Tomatoes are doing well in here, in the greenhouse. Um, they're all growing nicely. Unfortunately, I think the slugs have nearly finished off my marigolds that I planted. But uh, I've got a tomato flower. And they're all in, all nice and snug in here. These are all cherry tomatoes, so they're not going to grow that tall. But yeah, they're doing well. I put a bit of footage in for you now of uh, doing the tomatoes. And I'll just show you briefly, just about 30 seconds of how I planted up these tomatoes because I do them differently um, to how I've done them in the greenhouse in the polytunnel but it seems to work really well so these are the tomatoes that I've planted so far I've got 10 in here now I've just planted them into the soil at the moment but uh, I'm going to plant these differently to what I've done in the polytunnel so I'll show you what I'm going to do I, it works eff efficiently every year but it's just a different way for me to grow them as well this year. Um, so what we do is, I've got a bucket, I've got a hole out in the bottom. As you can see, there's the stem. You take the bottom leaves off, like that. New roots will grow out from these hairs up the stem. So what I'm going to do is, like you would earth tomato, potatoes up, I'm going to earth the tomatoes up. And take some compost. And put it inside my tub. Now what that will do is, now it's covered, it'll encourage it to put out new roots. So what I'll do is, as it gets taller, I'll continue to fill it up until it gets up to the top of the pot and then I'll have a nice strong healthy plant with a nice strong root system and then when the season's finished I can take the compost out and pop it on the surface of the soil. So that's all I'm going to do with these. So that's them. And then in here, we did have some French beans. But something munched them. But I do have some sunflowers and some amaranth. So all is not lost. It's the story of my life, really. Battling the wildlife. Still got all these to plant. They all need to go in. I want to try and get these kale planted before the slugs demolish them. And I've still got leeks to go in, you know. Right. The sides of the polytunnel's doing well as well. Um, have you seen the size of my pumpkin? I thought these were going to be... Um, I bought butternut squash, but they're definitely not butternut squash. No idea what they are. I think it's a pumpkin, but not too sure. But I've got a few coming up. Got another one there. I did have another one, but something's munched it. Another one there. The courgettes were lovely. I've had a couple of courgettes already. 
there's not much more coming through than what I showed you last time. It's a bit slow with all the rain that we've had because we've not had a lot of sunshine. But uh, cucumbers are a bit slow here. These ones, they look like they need a bit of a feed. Still no sign of any aubergines. There's one here, I think. I think that's an aubergine. But I think it's been too cold. But my cannellini beans are growing nicely down the side there. But something's been finishing off my runner beans. Clematis is doing well. This one here, I only planted that about a month ago. Well, not even that. It seems to be growing up the fence really well. So I'm pleased with that. I've got a rose down here that's supposed to be a climber. It's not very climbery though. It doesn't seem to be climbing very far. But it has got a new rose bud on it. But no, it doesn't seem to be climbing very far. Right, I'm going to show you something else. Jerusalem artichokes need the tops chopping so that they'll put all their growth into their tubers and I need to string them up ready for the autumn so when the strong winds come they won't blow over. Um, just open the polytunnel. Polytunnel's growing nicely. Look at the size of them on this side. They must get more water, ground water on this side. They get so big, I can't get in for the cucumbers. So I'll have to rectify that next year and maybe do tomato and cucumber one alternate. So I can get into both. Or maybe the tomatoes at the back, I don't know. I'm not sure. But it's definitely not working out that way. It's working on that side, they're not growing as quick. But I've got plenty of cucumbers coming through. See just here, I've got one there and then I've got another three coming through down there. I've got one here. There's another one. These ones are pickling cucumbers, I think. And then, husband loves them. I've got another two or three down here. Can you see them? I've got another three. I've got some more down there and then I can't get in and see them on this side but I did have a few I've got one down there there he is in there some more here so yeah they're doing really well I need to work out how to grow them more efficiently next year um, yeah, very pleased. So all this is doing really well. It's well up past my waist. Let's open the other door. My radishes have nearly finished, but I've been picking the tops and putting them in the um, smoothies. I'm just going to head up the top of the garden. and I want to show you something up there. So let's go and have a look. Have you seen Gabriel Oak? Isn't it gorgeous? Flower opened up today. It's beautiful. I'm really pleased with it. Put on some nice new growth since I've had, since it's been in. But uh, yeah, very pleased. Very happy. It's going to grow up to four feet. So it's going to be right up here, which will look nice against uh, Pilgrim when Pilgrim decides to do something because. Pilgrim's not doing much. <laughs> Let's take that off. Maybe it doesn't like having the strings on. Wants to be free. Yeah, so Gordon's lilies are nearly finished. Very nice though. Smell delicious. Right, this is what I wanted to show you up here. I did some clearing last night and the last couple of nights. I've cleared all the weeds away here. I've got these piles of grass everywhere. 
But down here I've done most of the work. Um, isn't that pink beautiful? I believe it's a campion. Isn't it lovely? Generous garden has put on a nice bit of growth the last couple of days. But yeah, that's not what I want to show you. This is what I want to show you. Look how good this looks though. Much better, isn't it? It's all been weeded. All the grass has been taken out. And this is the mountain that came out of there. Well, part of it. I've already cleared some. So, I'm nearly there. See the rhododendron at the back now? Which you couldn't see before. This one here. And then I've got one other one here. And they've put on a decent amount of growth in the last few months. So that's good. And then I've got a pear tree here. And a plum tree there. So that's good. I found a currant bush as well. I didn't know was there. Excuse the banging, he's just come back. Um, another rhododendron here. This was Gordon. It's got beautiful pink flower on it. This is the one that the tree surgeon told me to take out. He said, oh, it's not going to grow. It's not going to do anything. Have you seen the new buds? Just goes to show what tree surgeons know, isn't it? Nice new buds on there, look at that. So I'm hoping it's going to come back and fill out nicely because the yellow one in the woodland path did. So I'm hoping that this is going to do the same. But it seems happy here, it seems to have got itself settled. So I think it's going to be fine. I just need to put some Epsom salts on it because I believe that works well. That's what he used to use. So I just need to rescue this patch here, tidy this up. I think I'm going to take this yellow flower out because there's far too much of it. Um, this one here. And I think I might put that under the trees at the back. But uh, I found this rose as well and it's got a bud on. This is one of the Yew Gardens one and it's supposed to be pink. So we've got that. Um, and what else did I find? This is my... Um, Scepter de Isle. Doesn't seem to be doing anything at the moment. It's got a nice new shoot on it there, look. But uh, yeah, it's not doing so bad. And then I've got some fruit in there somewhere that needs rescuing as well. So I think that's what I'm going to do now today. Now the weather's dry. My uh, wisteria's filled out beautifully. And I've never seen these before, but it's got these little beans on it. Uh, these little fairy beans, they're quite fairy. So I've not seen them before. And then this was my attempt to keep the black bird off. I don't think it's worked. Do you know, I think he's just been in and just stripped it inside out. Yes, he has. There's a few currants in there. But look, he's even left the evidence. Look, pesky blighters. Oh well. So yeah, I need to finish weeding this. And then the next job is to put all the wood chip on. So I think I'll carry on with that today. This was supposed to be a hydrangea and a spirea bed, but it's just turned into a weed bed. I found a nice hypenicum there yesterday. But what I did find underneath all the weeds was this beautiful thing. Now this was Gordon's. And I have a fly. This was Gordon's. And uh, I took it up from the bank in front of the magnolia there. And it was in the way. It was too big. Didn't want it there. It seems very happy here. So uh, it's, I, I love the colours. It looks blue but it's pink as well. So we must just have different type of soil here, so yeah, it can stay. Need to thin out some of this hypenicum, although the bees do love it. This is a different hypenicum. This came from Hampton Court. It belonged to an elderly gentleman I used to garden for back in my old house. So yeah, he gave me ten of them and this is the only one that survived. They were all dying when, he, when we took them out. And he said, oh, just take them out, chuck them in the bin. I don't want them. So I said, well, can I take them? So I took them. And this is the only one that survived. 
So it needs, needs a bit of a chop in the autumn and then it'll bush out again. So very happy. I've got a couple of uh, hydrangeas to go in. I've got two round on the yard and uh, one up here. So I've got three to go in. So I'm hoping they're going to go here between that spire here there and this hypenicum here and then another one here. So that will finish that off. And then that will be that. I think that's it for today. I just thought I'd show you a little look around. And uh, we just have a little mooch in the garden to see what's going on, show you what I've been up to. And uh, with the noise in the back, there's not really much I can do today. So I just thought we'd just have a quick mooch while he wasn't making a noise. And uh, I'll go and get on with my day. I've got the rest of my washing to peg out. And... Yep, just got to go and do the tea. But uh, for me, I'm going to go and carry on with that patch over there. And then I can get the rest of my plants put in. So I'm going to go and get on with that now. And if you haven't already, please do like and subscribe, hit that bell. And I will see you soon. Take care. Bye for now. Bye bye.